All right, so this is just off the cuff, what I got out of chapter two of The Lean Startup, which I read today. So Eric Ries in this chapter starts off with this description of the ideal, the, the problem that a lot of startups have. They have all the raw ingredients for a great product and a great user experience and a great business. They have the team, they have the product, they have the investors, but they don't end up finding product market fit. They don't end up at a point where they have a product that millions of people use. And the reason for that is because, in Eric Ries's mind, it's because there's this misunderstanding that to build a great product, you need to have great management and you need to apply solid business principles like, like how to build a great management team, how to build a great engineering team. And while those things are important, they're not important at the start of every startup where you're trying to find product market fit. When you're trying to find product market fit, it's not about how well organized your startup is in the traditional sense of having great management, having great culture. That's not really what a startup is about at the start, at least pre-product market fit. At the start, it's all about having a process for learning about what your users want and what that actually is to you in the form of a product. And to learn about what your users want, the only way is to have a solid process of learning from your users about what they want and what they don't want. And this is where the Lean Startup introduces the build, measure, learn feedback loop, which Eric Ries actually talks about using the example of SnapTax, which was a tool that was created by the large company Intuit. And with Intuit, what they did was they ran many experiments with Snap, SnapTax, not Snapchat. They ran many experiments. They ran up to 500 experiments. I think that's what he mentioned in, in around, I think a few weeks to try to test out every single little aspect of the product that they were going to build into the SnapTax user experience. Now what that kind of, notice that that's very different. And by the way, by this time, Intuit was still a large company. Notice that with this kind of product development cycle, it wasn't about having a solid product roadmap and then having a solid just set in stone lockstep plan of let's build feature one, feature two, feature three. No, it was actually, let's have all these experiments run to test our assumptions about our users and then find which tests work and then build additional tests on top of these successful tests to refine our understanding of our users and eventually have an informed understanding of what to build for the product. And what they did was they ran many micro experiments. They did this iteratively to a point where SnapTax then became a widely adopted product. Now this is crucial for startups. And this comes to Eric Ries's definition of what a startup is, which is a business that operates in a very high uncertainty environment where innovation is the name of the game. With innovation, you're building something that hasn't really existed before. It's a new way of doing things. And when you're doing that, you have to be very careful about what you build, lest you build something that nobody wants. And that's what startups really run into nowadays. They, they build something that nobody wants because they don't follow this iterative approach that is advocated for by the lean startup of build, measure, learn. Instead, they adopt traditional management processes of let's make sure this is scalable. Let's have these very rigid specifications and let's have these milestones and roadmaps. That's not what you want. And that's really the point that is made in, the chap in chapter two of the Lean Startup where Eric Ries introduces a large company that actually adopts Lean Startup practices to make sure that it's constantly innovating and that company is into it. So that's it guys for chapter two of the Lean Startup. This is just off the cuff. And yeah, stay tuned for chapter three of the Lean Startup, my summary of chapter three of the Lean Startup. And I'll be doing these things, I've always been doing these things off the cuff, and I think that's the only way to express these raw and organic thoughts that come out when I'm doing these. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.